So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and get started here with just a few housekeeping rules uh, or ideas. Um, again, my name is Jeremy Bloom. I'm the BLM Project Manager, and today's webinar is, of course, related to the uh, interagency review of federally designated West Wide Energy Corridors on BLM and National Forest System lands across the western U.S. Uh, a couple things on the screen here are uh, just housekeeping notes. We've muted everybody just to kind of make that simple. Uh, we, we do want to get your questions, uh, so if you want to go ahead and use the chat box or just jot those down as we go, uh, we want to circle back around at the end and get to those questions. Uh, and to unmute, you just hit star six, of course. Um, I wanted to mention also that we'll be recording this webinar for uh, the sake of being able to provide that on the website uh, that we'll show you here. And for anyone who wants to go back and uh, re-listen to anything or uh, who possibly can't join us today, uh, that'll be made available. So um, hope that everybody's okay with that and appreciate uh, you just being aware of that. And with that, uh, I'd like to uh, also just point out that if you have any other questions or comments uh, down the road uh, after today or this presentation, you know, there's an email address up front here that kind of goes to the entire project team. And that email address is there at corridors at anl.gov. So that, again, we'll, we'll circle back around to that at the end, make sure that folks are aware of that if something uh, pops up. Uh, following this. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Uh, I'd like to, to thank everyone on behalf of the Bureau of Land Management, the Forest Service, as well as the Department of Energy, and our entire project review team for taking the time to join us on this webinar. Your engagement, uh, we consider it to be really important, and your participation in this review effort uh, is really relevant to the review of these designated energy corridors across the federal lands. Uh, if, uh, if Reggie's there, I'd like to introduce uh, Reggie Woodruff, who takes on the many challenges as the Energy Program Manager at the U.S. Forest Service Washington office, and he brings a lot of needed support and leadership to this important effort. Uh, Reggie, if you're on, uh, you may have to hit star six, to, and uh, you can say a few words if, if you would like. Can't hear you if you're talking, Reggie. Uh, you may have to hit star six. Well, we'll circle back if uh, Reggie's able to join us. I, I do see him in the, uh, the attendee list, so we'll just keep on moving. Everybody's time is valuable, so I want to keep on going here. The purpose of today's webinar is intended to inform you on what we're up to with this effort, uh, and we'd also like to explain what we'd like from you uh, and to orient you with this unique process for the energy corridor reviews and the materials that we've sent out we'd like your review of, and as well as some tools available to aid in your review. A couple of things I'd like to briefly touch on, if that's okay, are that this review uh, is, is a bit of a high-level review of the energy quarters that already exist as of today. Um, I'll explain a little bit more background in a minute. Now, this review, I want to be clear that this is not a land use planning or NEPA process, uh, which will result in agency planning decisions or on-the-ground decisions at this point. Uh, the review of the energy quarters is a high-level preliminary effort that looks at the big picture across the entire West, and uh, the findings from that will feed into the agency land use planning efforts uh, where a more robust and more detailed further analysis can be accomplished, and those decisions can be made uh, at that later time with regard to what's most appropriate uh, for the land management in those unique areas. So uh, over the last couple of years, we've been reviewing energy corridors uh, in the portions of the 11 western states and now in 2019 we'll be reviewing and seeking your specific input and feedback on ways that the agencies could improve these uh, in this area. Um, Jim, if you could pull up the, the map on the web page. 
to sh just to clarify what we're reviewing this year. I think we'll have to go to the four, five, and six. Great. So this is the area of our review for 2019. You can see we have Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, Oregon, Washington, about the western two-thirds of Nevada and central and northern California. Uh, what we're specifically looking for are ideas and feedbacks on ways that the agencies can improve the relevance of the energy corridors, how those corridors could be sited on the landscape better, uh, and the proper management to optimally serve for you know potential future infrastructure use. And equally important is that we're looking for feedback on how the agencies can improve the management of those corridors to better protect you know, the most important natural and cultural resources. So really looking for your feedback on the best way to do stuff. Um, Jim, if we could go to the uh, regional review webpage as well. Great, thank you. I want to orient everyone with uh, the process in a second here and some of the tools available. And this is a really great opportunity to ask questions and to make, you know, honestly, like to make things as orderly as possible. Yeah, just go ahead and use that chat box as we go through here. Um, and just a little bit of background related to where where we've come from to get to this point is, um, of course, in back in 2005, um, the Energy Policy Act became law, and in that, um, it was mandated that the agencies uh, designate energy corridors across the 11 western states. Uh, so following a programmatic environmental impact statement, uh, the agencies designated these energy corridors through records of decision, and then those decisions were uh, challenged in court. And through that effort, you know, through that process, the agencies and the plaintiffs developed a settlement agreement, which uh, really lined out uh, what we're doing today, uh, which includes uh, the review of these locations of the corridors and uh, really focused through on uh, four key siting principles that are up on the screen now. And so the purpose of this review is to try to examine this new and relevant information that we can gain from the past 10 years since these corridors were designated uh, and to gain that from stakeholders, uh, both uh, federal stakeholders, state, local, tribal governments, uh, energy industry, uh, special interest groups, non-governmental organizations, landowners, um, all sorts of different plans and priorities that we want to take into consideration. But through the lens of these four siting principles, which are that corridors, we've agreed that we would look and try to find ways to better uh, make sure that these are thoughtfully cited to provide both maximum utility and minimum impact to the environment. Uh, corridors need to promote efficient use of the landscape for necessary development. Uh, corridors need to uh, define appropriate and acceptable uses. And also that corridors need to provide, you know, connectivity. This this is a, a key thing too that need to be looking to connectivity for renewable energy generation to the maximum extent possible and while not turning a blind eye to the existing generation that's out there in order to balance those renewable resources with um, uh, existing ones. And so we kind of have this uh, paradigm shift over time that, you know, technology changes and stuff. So what we're looking to do is try to maintain maximum flexibility with uh, our planning so that we have quarters that will work not only for what's existing today, but moving forward into the future that we have enough flexibility to uh, avoid sensitive resources, but also to uh, have pathways that will allow for uh, future uh, energy transmission, whether that's uh, oil and gas, uh, hydrogen, uh, CO2, uh, electrical transmission, things of that nature. And so um, that's what we're looking at. We're looking for ways that we can improve, whether it's the locations of these through shifts, revisions, uh, in some cases deletions, in other cases additions that are proposed. Uh, we want that feedback. Jim, if we could also go to the process overview, I think that that could help. On the region four, five, and six page. Great. 
So this is sort of a graphic that represents the process and how we are moving through this effort. So we've done a lot of work behind the scenes already to develop the draft abstracts, which are a composite of all the information about a particular energy corridor. And so there's one for each corridor. Um, we've laid the groundwork in that, and now we're to the point where we really want to engage with external stakeholders to get further review, further um, concerns, issues, um, information about things that are going out, going on out on the landscape uh, in local areas, so that we really have a comprehensive uh, foundation to begin with. And so, what we're asking you to do through this effort is to review those energy corridor abstracts. They'll kind of explain what's already in there, uh, why the corridors were designated where they are. Uh, we've done some preliminary work to identify concerns, and uh, we want to make sure that we, we're seeing the whole picture. So your feedback at this stage is really important. So we have this 45-day stakeholder review period, uh, and that will run through April 8th. Following that, you know, we want to finalize those abstracts and then move on to having some in-person stakeholder workshops to develop, uh, after we have sort of all the issues identified, we want to develop some more refined ideas on how we can revise, delete, add, um, shift, um, improve these, uh, either the locations of the corridors or in some cases, uh, joint interagency operating procedures on how we can manage the use of those corridors better so that projects that would be cited within those corridors, uh, there'll, there'll be some, some best management practices that will improve the compatibility between the, the resource protection and the resource use. Uh, and from there, we're really looking for a lot more feedback and interaction at those workshops. Um, we plan to have those later on this year. I'll get to that. And then, Following that, we'll develop a report that kind of summarizes everything, and we want to put that out for yet another review so that everybody's on the same page of what, what we're kind of coming up with, how, how we synthesize that data, and how we balance out um, really that uh, maximizing and putting these things in the best place for use, but also balancing it with minimizing impacts to important resources. And then following that, you know, just trying to get out the final report, and we're trying to, our goal is to have this effort completed by the end of the calendar year, 2019. So um, with that, uh, that's kind of the process. Um, just so folks know, I think our workshops are targeted right now. We're thinking, uh, we're moving this up, we're trying to accelerate our schedule just a little bit. And right now we're thinking that late May, and then early June, probably those two weeks will ballpark of uh, we will be having some in-person workshops across uh, the, the states that we're reviewing in 2019. And as soon as those dates are solidified, we will be updating the web page and there will be an email blast that is sent out uh, that you'll be receiving with specific dates and locations and everything like that. And we'll also do a, a big press release so that we can make sure we're trying to get as much attendance and input as possible for those workshops. Um, I think we'll move on for now. Um, I want to introduce Jim Kuiper as part of the project team here. He's uh, really savvy with our uh, mapper. That is a great tool uh, for assisting in your review. Uh, Jim, I'd like to see if you want to just give kind of an orientation on the the web mapper for the energy corridors, and then we'll continue to move forward. All right, thank you, Jeremy. And I'm going to repeat the um, global mute because um, it doesn't catch people that call in after after we mute everyone. So again, to unmute your phone, um, are sick. All guests have been muted.
You can unmute your line by pressing star six. All right. So um, going back to the home page, um, one thing you'll notice on, on the side panels, there's a lot of helpful information some on every page and some on, on the home page. And at the very top right, there's a button to launch the corridor mapping tool. And I'm going to demonstrate that um, in a second. Below that are a couple of videos. And if you, you find uh, the tool a little confusing at first, um, or there's something I kind of gloss over, we have uh, a couple short training videos. The first one is just generally using the tool. And the second one gets into uh, using the conflict map. Um, there's some very useful things you can do with it. And I'll be using it during the, the demo, but um, not explaining all those details. So that video is helpful for that. And on every page, you have this subscribe button, so you can make sure you're getting any updates. And also, um, we're going to be talking about this online input form, but the link to get to it is on each of these pages that we'll be showing on the home page or on the website. So when I launch the tool, I'm presented um, with the splash screen. And um, if you haven't used the tool before, uh, we'd like you to register for it. There's two, two main purposes for that. One is just to for us to have a little better sense of who's using it, but primarily uh, for you to have access to some uh, proprietary data that's been licensed. So the infrastructure data, um, including this transmission line, layer here that's in the table of content is licensed. And um, once you register, you'll have access to that. You click the register button. There's a short form which you submit. Um, but you're not done then. Um, you, sh you should see an email to that asks you to confirm your registration by verifying your email. If you don't see that, uh, check your junk folder or contact us. And then finally, we need to approve the registration. So there will be a short delay for that if there's any uh, time. If, if that's too long, just uh, email us and um, we'll remedy, this, remedy that. Uh, my password or my username and password are cached, um, but you would enter what, you're, what you chose here and log in when you reach this screen after you've registered. Uh, once you hit that, it'll refresh and enable all the GIS layer um, content in the tool. So um, I'm going to only mention a couple things about the interface here, but uh, those videos give you a much fuller uh, tour of the tool. Uh, on the left here, we have the table of contents, and the lower panel controls the layers that are displayed on the map. At the bottom, there's a a toggle for the base map, and that's also very useful, um, particularly the uh, aerial imagery background that you can turn on, and which is especially good when you're zoomed in. Up at the top is a section that has hierarchical uh, sections on here. And I just want to point out that there's quite a bit more infrastructure data in the tool besides what comes up by default. So you've got pipelines, substations, power plants, a lot of the relevant infrastructure. There are recently approved transmission projects, which we'll be talking about a little bit later. And um, there are some locally designated corridors that exist. And um, one of the maps in the abstract here are the layers uh, from, from map you'll see later. So this energy section is especially useful. And a lot of these other sections have to do with the um, resource layers that may intersect the corridors or be near it. So um, pretty much all the GIS data that we're using for this project is accessible to you in this tool. Um, at the top, this bar is used for navigating the map and it has a few additional tools like info. If I choose that tool and click on the map, it brings up additional data um, that comes out of the database. So I clicked on a transform, transmission line, and it's got a lot more details I can learn about it. Um, one thing
thing we definitely want you to find is the bookmarks. Um, so these are pre-populated with all the corridors, and we're going to be talking about a Region 4 corridor today, uh, number 218-240. So if you just uh, go down there and click that, it'll zoom the map to that particular corridor, which is in Wyoming. Uh, the landscape here is checkerboard, which means that um, essentially every other square mile is federal land alternating with private. So that's that's why you see that pattern. And the subject quarter today is uh, 218, 240. And you'll see a set of numbers superimposed on it, which are mileposts. Those um, are our reference system, just like a road mileposting system that helps you uh, describe locations along that corridor. OK. Um, one thing um, I mentioned, the link to the comment form that was on the website. But there's another additional thing you can do in the mapper. So if you click Feedback, um, you get this tool and click Start Drawing. If you wanted to comment on a very specific location, you can sketch that on the map. Um, double click to finish. And then when you hit Stop Drawing, um, you can that location can be part of your comment. So when I click Launch Form, brings me to the stakeholder input form directly, and I'll scroll down. And you can see that a, a version of that map has been included in the comment. So we get that as well, and it's very helpful for us to see very specifically the location you're referring to in your comment. This video at the top of the form, um, it's short, and it uh, describes the whole all the details about the comment process, including the tool I just showed you. OK, another important tool is the View Abstract tool. So on the website, um, we didn't show it, but uh, right at the bottom of the page here, uh, if you scroll down, these are the links to all the abstracts that have been released for your uh, review. You can just get to those PDFs off this page. But within the tool, you can uh, click this View Abstract and click on the corridor of interest, and it'll um, it'll access the abstract for the corridor that you're looking at. You'll see, you know, there's a map that shows a very similar view here. Um, so we're going to spend the rest of the demo. Um, Ellen and I are going to talk about these abstracts, and I'll be uh, showing you how you can use the tool in concert with these abstracts. I'm going to introduce Ellen White, and she'll go over the abstract content, and we'll trade back and forth uh, showing you some of the mapper details while we do that. OK, hi. I'm Ellen White with Argonne. Um, and the quarter we're going to discuss today is quarter 218-240, an east-west quarter in Wyoming. Um, and each abstract will have the same layout. They all um, start with a corridor purpose and rationale. Um, and that will um, provide the rationale for why the corridor was designated in the 2009 EIS. Um, it includes information about existing infrastructure, uh, potential for future development, um, planned projects uh, that are proposed within the corridor, general information about the corridor, its uh, location, jurisdiction, length, um, and its designated use, which um, could be either underground only, electric only, or multimodal, which would accommodate both um, transmission lines and pipelines, and any other relevant information. Um, so you can see from the map here that um, the corridor connects to other Section 368 corridors. Um, creating a larger corridor network across Wyoming, um, across BLM, and Forest Service land. Um, and as Jim said, there's a checkerboard pattern there, so only the um, the red portion is designated. And if it's if there's a little gap in there, it means it's crossing private land or or land that's not BLM or Forest Service administered. Um, there's also the um, proposed Wyoming what pipeline corridor initiative is proposed to follow a portion of that corridor. And um, Jim has highlighted it there. 
Um, and if you want to know where that is in the um, on, along the corridor, you can go back to the mapping tool. I'll just illustrate. Uh, this particular layer happens to be under row corridors locally designated, and that's not very obvious. But you can access it through the table of contents here. But if you if you type in any aspect of that title or just a keyword, um, you're likely to find it. So I'm just going to type WY, and I know that'll reduce me to the layers with that abbreviation in it. And I'll show the layer that way. So I click it, add it to the map. I'm going to use a slider here to, to darken the line. And uh, so we see here we're looking at red and green lines. And this red line here is the one that we're describing in the abstract. And the mile post range where it intersects the corridor. OK, we can go back to the abstract. Um, so this corridor has no transmission lines, but there are pipelines along the entire length of the corridor. Um, and it mentions that there could be um, some congestion issues. And if we, um, that first static map, that overview map doesn't have any infrastructure, but if you scroll down, Jim, the second map um, has existing infrastructure. And I'm sure there's many more pipelines in this, but these are major infrastructure, major pipelines, um, and major transmission lines. Um, so those are the ones that you're seeing populated here. Um, and uh, let's go back up to that first. Um, and the corridor is multimodal for most of the corridor on BLM land, which is the yellow. And there's a small um, uh, underground-only portion in the uh, in the Ashley National Forest from mile post five there. Um, and we'll take a closer look at that on the map for later. But um, so for this page, we are asking for input um, regarding recent um, changes in power generation or demand near the corridor. Um, any infrastructure that's in the corridor that's not listed here on this abstract um, or other authorized, recently authorized uses um, in the area or along the corridor. Um, this section also um, describes whether or not the corridor is a corridor of concern identified in the settlement agreement. Um, corridor 218-240 is not, but if it were, that line item would be red. It would have a Y for yes, and it would list the concerns that are identified for that corridor. We're going to go along to the conflict map. And I just want to say, um, we did mute all. So Jeremy, if you ever want to chime in um, and you can't, it's probably because we muted you again and you need to press star six. Up to mute yourself. Appreciate that. OK. Um, so the conflict map is an assessment to um, help the agencies identify a quarter's proximity to environmentally sensitive areas using a set of criteria. And there's a link to a list of that criteria on the right. And it's on the website. Um, and uh, it's separated, the conflict map is separated into high, medium, and low potential conflict. The high potential conflict, um, those areas are usually congressionally designated areas. Medium potential conflict are other, maybe slightly less sensitive areas. And the low potential conflict are previously disturbed areas, um, roads, or uh, infrastructure, or things like that. Um, so as you, we're going to demonstrate this on the map, but mapper. But right now, this is just a static map. It, you can see that for the most part, it goes through medium potential conflict. There's a red high potential conflict around milepost five in the Ashley National Forest. But on the abstract, you can't tell exactly what that um, that high conflict is. So we can go to the mapping tool and use the conflict layer to really identify what that is. All right, so again, navigating this um, long list of layers is difficult, but you can type in a keyword like conflict, and then you'll be presented with the choices there. So we're looking at the region four to through six potential conflict map, and I add that to the map, and you see a similar coloration um, as the uh, static map in the abstract. The nice part of, the, of this layer is now when I use the info tool, I can click in this location that's got the high conflict, and I get a, a lengthy list of potential constraints. Um, so the ones that are flagged, first of all, um, you see it's flagged as high conflict. And um, it may have one or more, but in this case, it's an inventoried roadless area that occurs. 
occurs in this uh, particular location. And um, each of these descriptions corresponds to the layer names in the tool. So then you can subsequently, if you put roadless, you can add the layer that relates to that constraint and see the extent of the roadless constraint in relation to the corridor. So again, there's a video that that explains the details of what I just showed you, but that's the process that you can go through to um, to understand the whole uh, a whole variety of potential conflicts around the corridor, and then learn about a particular one. And again, if we follow up with the info tool, um, we can actually get the name of the roadless area from the roadless layer and get even more detail. Okay, so let's go back to the abstract. Yeah, so this um, this conflict map is a really um, good, quick, high-level way of viewing environmental conflicts, um, and it's especially useful if you're um, trying to suggest routing the corridor a different way. Say you want to route it out of sage grouse habitat, maybe you just check the conflict map to see if there's any really high-level uh, conflicts in the area that you might want to make sure you're not suggesting to route it right through wilderness instead, or something like that, as an example. Um, and also to note that the higher level conflicts will always override a lower conflict. So there could be a medium conflict in, you know, underneath the red conflict, but it will show up as red. Um, so if you have a wilderness area and uh, maybe VRM class 2 area, um, the red high conflict, VRM class 2 is a medium conflict, and then the, the higher conflict will override and it will turn, it will look red. Um, okay, I think that's enough on that. And, Again, there's the video that can tell you a little bit more about this if you have some questions. Let's go to the next page. Um, this is a corridor density map, and it just shows how many right-of-ways are in the corridor. Um, and it separates it out by prior to 2009, which would be before the PEIS and before they were designated, and after 2009, after the, the um, corridor was designated. So it just kind of shows you how many, uh, how many right-of-ways are in the Quarter and when um, when all of them were authorized. So okay, let's go to the next page. Um, this is the quarter review table. This is the real meat of the abstract. Um, it's where we identify issues of potential incompatibility. Um, so where the quarter intersects areas that um, are identified and managed by BLM or Forest Service that may not be compatible with future development in the corridor. Organized by milepost um, and divided out by field office or forest and their associated land use plans. Um, so I'm just going to explain what is in the table and then we're going to go through a couple of examples. So the first column describes the issue and how it's addressed in the land use plan. If there's um, management prescriptions that you know dictate how that um, issue should be managed, that's listed in the first column. The second column includes the milepost, and it can be used to locate the area as well as the um, relevant GIS layer in the mapping tool. And then the third column includes other relevant information, including descriptive information, um, if the quarter is managed under another plan other than the um, general land use plan, um, as well as if we've received any input, um, uh, stakeholder input from the 2014 request for information on this on a particular issue. Um, and then the fourth column is um, resolutions, potential resolutions. Um, and some of these potential resolutions could include um, opportunities to improve corridor placement. This could be uh, a, a really large corridor shift somewhere else in the, in the area. It could be a slight corridor shift to avoid um, a specific resource. Um, it could be widening or narrowing the corridor to um, provide, maybe widen it to provide more flexibility in micrositing or narrowing to avoid a particular area, um, as well as um, suggested new or revised interagency inter operating procedures, which are um, best management practices that were agreed upon by um, BLM and U.S. Forest Service in the PEIS. Um, and so to suggest possibly um, expanded or new IOPs um, to minimize impacts. Um, perhaps a change in the land use plan that would be done, um, the land use uh, planning process, but um, perhaps revising that to um, make the issue in the corridor um, development more compatible. Um, and or last,
lastly, that, that despite this issue, the quarter still meets the best uh, best meets the fighting principles. And that's why I actually got this help just because um, I thought it might be a gift. That's and also I, you know, or two of my associates were are able to get on. So we're only listening, and it's making it really difficult to follow. Hi, Erlene. Um, this is Jeremy. All guests have been muted. You can unmute your line by pressing star six. Okay. Sorry, to continue. Um, so, anyways, for this, um, in this table, what we're asking for um, for input is um, additional opportunities to revise the corridor, to reroute the corridor if, if needed, um, and specifically what that might be, what the suggestions might be. Um, if the corridor's not in a good place, where should it be? Uh, or if there's additional concerns that haven't been identified in this, you know, in the abstract, um, we're looking for um, for that as well, and as much specific information um, as you can would be great. Um, so now we're going to go through a couple of examples. We're going to read through the issue and, and show you what it looks like on the mapping tool. Um, and we're going to start with that second row, Ford Trail Feasibility Study Trail. Um, it intersects and follows the corridor. Um, the RMP predates the trail legislation, so the third column is um, what's providing guidance and clarification to maintain values, characteristics, and setting of the trail. And it also provides additional information that the border is co-located at this location with the pipeline. Um, and then the final column, um, potential resolution, um, is a suggestion to possibly locate, either locate future infrastructure south of the trail or to shift the entire corridor slightly south to avoid the trail, um, as well as um, a, a proposed new or suggested new IOP for trails um, to minimize impacts um, when the quarter has to cross trails. So let's take a look at this on the mapping tool. I'm going to use just the word study to pop up that layer. And um, again, I'm going to darken it. Slider, and I'm going to drop the uh, Wyoming one because of the similar color. So the study trail is in, is here. I can also use the info tool to just check and verify that that's what I'm looking at. So it's the four trails feasibility study trail. And so um, you can see it, it is within the quarter for a number of miles, and the, the, the suggestion. Um, in the abstract is to either locate it, locate future infrastructure south of the trail, or to shift the corridor so that it's no longer to the south so that the corridor is no longer within the trail. Um, so here we're looking for, you know, if you were to do a similar exercise, if, if there's an if there's another recommendation somewhere else to reroute the corridor, um, suggestions for specific IOPs to help minimize impacts on the on, tra on the trail. Um, that's just a way to, to visually see what what the what is in the abstract table, um, and it just really helps to be able to visualize that. Perhaps turn on and off other layers if you're suggesting to route it somewhere else. Would it would shifting it to the south um, bring it into some other conflict, um, other resource? So um, that's just a way to visually see what is in the table. Um, so let's go see another example. Um, Next, we're going to look at a roadless area. This is in the Ashley National Forest. You can see it's managed under the Ashley National Forest uh, Land Management Plan. And um, we're going to look at that second one between miles four and six. There's a roadless area. Um, and uh, the roadless rule prohibits road construction. Um, so it doesn't necessarily prohibit development, of, uh, but there's no road construction allowed, so it could, it could impact um, future development. The corridor at this location is designated underground only to minimize visual impacts and recreational values. Um, and the resolution here is not to move the corridor. Um, the roadless area it, it encompasses a broad area north and south of the corridor. Um, it is co-located with an existing pipeline um, in this area. And um, there is a suggested IOP for coordination um, related to roadless area to minimize um, conflicts with the roadless rule. And again, IOP 
expertise or, or the best management practices that apply to um, uh, Forest Service and BLM. So let's take a look at <clears throat> this on the mapping tool. Okay, so I had added the roadless area earlier, so we have it on the map already. And um, we were talking about this location along the corridor. So I'm going to zoom into that portion. And here you can see there's a different uh, pattern in the corridor symbolization. So that, includes, that indicates underground only. So you, there is some symbology that helps you see that. And um, that's the portion of the corridor that's within the road this area and on Forest Service also. Okay, so that's just um, an example of uh, showing where where that cross is. That we the abstract does not recommend a quarter shift, but um, if you feel differently and want to and can provide um, a suggested quarter reroute, we welcome that um, or any additional um, comments or opportunities for the corridor. Um, and let's do one last example. Another thing, um, it was mentioning that there were some pipelines in there, so I'm going to add that to the map, too. Oh, thank um, you, Jim. Yeah, it, several, looks, it looks like there's nothing in that corridor right now. Right. Yeah, just to clarify, in the pipelines, we have um, three commodities, so crude oil, natural gas, and um, refined products, and also we have operational and other. So land pipelines or other um, inactive pipelines are in, in this other category. So in this case, uh, happens to be a refined product pipeline that is within this roadless area already in this area that we're discussing. Um, so sometimes you have to look you know, through quite a few layers to find the pipelines that you're looking for, but um, we have those in the tool as well. Yeah, and that's a good point because they're not all preloaded, like you mentioned earlier, onto the mapping tool. So it might look like there's nothing there, and you might need to double check and make sure all these layers are turned on. Um, so good point, Jim. Um, the last issue we're going to look at is um, priority habitat management area for sage grouse. Um, and this is in the Kemmerer Field Office, and it's managed under the um, RMP amendment for sage grouse that was issued in 2015. Um, so the first column indicates that it's a priority habitat management area, um, and uh, that co-location is preferred. And the third column indicates that we did receive an RFI comment to reroute the corridor um, due to its intersecting um, sage grouse habitat. Um, the last column, the resolution, suggests that there could be an opportunity to shift the corridor to the north to avoid or slightly avoid the PHMA. Um, and let's go to the mapping tool to take a look at that. I'm going to drop some of the previous layers. Confusing after a while. So there are several sage grouse uh, layers in the tool. We're talking about this priority managed habitat. At this time, sometimes you might want to um, use all the layers in concert so that because um, there's, uh, they cover different different areas. Here's the area of overlap that was being described. So it's um, this is why having the mapping tools is really helpful because you can see it does overlap, but only slightly and only at the edge of the corridor. And it's also co-located with a pipeline. There's that major highway to the north. So um, you could shift the corridor to the north. Um, another possibility, and this wasn't in the abstract, but um, could be a land management, a change in the, um, in the land management plan um, to maybe shift the boundaries of the PHMA because it's so it, it's up right along the edge. It's right co-located with a lot of infrastructure there. Um, but that could be a potential suggestion as well. Um, although you know, not in the abstract, but that was. Example that we gave on how you could suggest a change in land, land use plans, also. Um, so, those are all the examples that we have to go through today. Um, but let's go back to the abstract. Um, and so, the, um, the table includes all of the issues that are managed under land use plans. There are some issues.
issues that are um, not addressed through land use plans. It could be a jurisdictional issue um, that is, uh, you know, not under the BLM or Forest Service jurisdiction. It could be something that requires coordination between agencies, so it's not just the BLM or Forest Service um, concern. Um, or it could be general in nature, and we don't have any mileposts necessarily for it. And and in this section, we're looking for any issues that are missing, um, anything that um, you know of that's within this quarter that's not listed in the table or in this additional compatibility concern section, um, and feedback for how they could be resolved as well. Um, so that's the entire abstract. Each abstract for every quarter will have all of these sections. Um, and if there is no, if there are no issues, it will indicate such. Um, and then I want to check, do one more thing with the mapping tool, which is um, looking at the recently authorized project, transmission project, to clarify. Okay, so again, um, under electrical, there's a section on, on the, I'm sorry, under energy, recently approved transmission project, and we're looking at Gateway South, or right. Gateway West. In this example. So again, it's a linear layer that's kind of hard to distinguish. I'll clean up the map a little bit. And it's this uh, dark green line. Um, so yeah, you can flash things on and off a little bit if you're finding a hard time finding it. But this uh, project up here. And we find that, that this is helpful to look at, and which is why we have a separate layer entirely for these recently authorized projects, because um, in some cases, you may feel like the, you know, the recently authorized right-of-way may be a better place for um, new infrastructure than the corridor itself. Um, so it's just a good way to see where these new projects have gone and whether or not um, that should be considered for either a new corridor or a corridor shift um, to follow the recently authorized project. So this is it's a good layer to know about and to, and to play around with um, as you look at the um, at the corridor. Um, so again, when you're or when you're looking to provide feedback, um, it's important to consider the siting principles and keep those in mind. Um, minimum impact on the environment is a big one, um, but you also need to remember it in context of creating an effective and efficient pathway for energy transmission. And um, so we're looking at where is the best place to put these corridors and the best way to comment on how how to shift these corridors if they can reroute if they need to. Um, are there small shifts that could really uh, minimize impacts, the small shift to avoid say, that PHMA we talked about earlier? Um, is there a newly authorized project nearby that follows a better route that we can to consider relocating a part or an entire corridor or two? Um, is there a new IOP that could help reduce impacts? Um, so these are the questions we want you to consider during your review. And um, again, use the mapping tool. It really helps identify where some of these issues are in relation to the corridor. Um, also, if you know of other areas, sensitive areas, um, that aren't in the mapping tool, um, let us know. That's really helpful, too. Um, every single layer is not on here. It's the ones that we have data for. So and we appreciate new data as well. I'll pass it along to Jeremy. Can everybody hear me okay still? Yep. Yes. Okay, great. Um, thank you, Ellen, and thank you, Jim. Um, great job kind of walking us through the, the tools that we've kind of made available here. Um, there's a lot of information in there. Uh, there are, are uh, recordings available that you can look to to kind of get a walk through, or if you have any questions about how to use those, we're always available to help. That's uh, that's what we want to do is provide the support you need to be able to go in and, and to look at these because we're truly interested in your, uh, your local and specialized expertise uh, about what can be improved with these energy corridors. Uh, it can seem like a bit of a daunting task. Um, it's a challenge. Uh, to balance out, you know, finding a, a place that that seems optimal, uh, because as soon as you shift it from one uh, one concern, you kind of bump into another. Um, but we're trying to really 
look at that globally and uh, we really ask for your help with that. Uh, Ellen and Jim, they walked you through a couple of great examples of, you know, particular resources, you know, that you kind of can look at, you know, this is a this is a point in space and time and that this is a an issue here, but we can we can look at that and we can look at options about well, what, what could be improved with that. Um, we wanted you to use that as a proxy about like things that uh, your interests, your concerns, um, your local knowledge, your specialized knowledge in a certain area. That's hugely beneficial because uh, we can't we can't do that from our level. Like we really need a bit more detail, but we are trying to um, keep this at a high level review. Um, we're not talking about a specific project at this point. We're talking about a potential pathway that would make the most sense. So your feedback is really useful, and uh, we we certainly have gone through a lot of this already. I see we have a few questions, and I want to make sure that we get to those right away. Um, and so as you kind of walk through this, if you need help or assistance, make sure that you reach out to us. Uh, we, we really do value this, and we want to have a plan that makes sense. Um, and uh, not only does it maintain a viable energy transmission pathway network across the West, um, but it's relevant and it's useful, but it also uh, has that protection built into it from a, a comprehensive standpoint. Um, I noticed just yesterday uh, the uh, you know another lands bill is working its way to the president's desk uh, with regard, and in there it, it talked about um, wildlife corridors. Um, and the interesting thing about that is, uh, you know, trying to look at the impacts of habitat fragmentation in certain areas, you know, with regard to to wildlife corridors and things like that. Well, we've got to look at it from a big picture and then like dial it in, to, like zoom in closer and then get to the granular level of, of how do we do things right. And so I'd encourage you as you look at this, um, think big picture. Um, we have to have pathways, but we want them to be the best that we can do. And so um, with that, we can we have this opportunity here. It's a unique one for sure that we're we're relooking at what was done in 2009 as far as placing these corridors on the landscape. Uh, the focus is what can we do now to improve that? It's 10 years later. What do we know over that that last 10 years that we can build upon and locate these things better? Two ways, probably the best ways to, in, to, to give us your input are um, using that web page, that input tool that Jim showed, and it's in the video. Um, you can either draw on the map and then comment about a specific issue that you would like to be like evaluated and looked at better closer. Um, if you have proposals about shifting a quarter, removing a quarter. Uh, if you have an, a proposal that you have a energy project out somewhere and uh, you want to see a, a pathway to connect that into the grid somehow, um, you can propose new corridors. You could use that drawing tool to show that. Or you can just email us uh, any sort of comments. Uh, but I would ask if you do email us comments, just try to be specific about which corridor it is and which mile post is kind of near the, the concern or issue or um, just try to be as specific as you can. Jim's provided the email address that is the project email address. That's That goes to all of us, like I said in the beginning. That's a, a great way to provide us questions or information if you choose to comment that way. Um, so with that, um, I want to see if there's any other questions, but kind of getting close to the hour and a half and wanted to respect everybody's time and other commitments. Um, I do see your, your note here, Laura, about um, see if we can add uh, Wild Horse and Burrow HMAs and um, WHTs. So we'll certainly look at that as well. That's a really good point. Well, with that, I just wanted to really thank everyone for their time. Thank you uh, for taking the time and, and engaging in this effort. Um, we really do rely on the input that we can get from uh, the, the most local and expert folks that we can with relation to you know the local areas in this very large area. So the input that you can provide will really
really help us through this effort. And uh, like I said, we'll be compiling all that stuff into uh, the finalized abstracts so that we can have a really robust discussion about those things as we continue to move forward, both of the workshops and, you know, outside of the workshops through uh, other discussion, whether it's phone calls, conference calls, other webinars, and uh, or uh, just email. And so with that, um, provide those ideas. Um, try to get us your feedback by April 8th. And if uh, you could provide us with your contact information if you want us to keep you more in, in the loop on everything and other the other reviews that are ongoing as well. We'd appreciate that. Um, this is an important effort. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's a challenge, but we definitely have had these quarters in place for a long time, and it's uh, it's good to be able to look at these things at a big picture standpoint and see what we can do better. And the agencies are committed to taking that information and applying it in uh, the most appropriate and relevant way so that we can do what we've agreed to do, which is try to figure this out and balance the maximum use of these pathways and also minimize impacts to those very important, valuable natural and cultural resources and other uses. So with that, I appreciate your time, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. If you do have questions, um, the email address is there. Uh, certainly, uh, you can go to the website at any time. It has all of our contact information. Um, if there's anything you need, don't hesitate to reach out to us, myself or Reggie. Um, thank you very much.